Good morning and welcome to Epiphany Parish. My name is the Reverend Ruth Ann Garcia and I am so glad to be here with you today on Trinity Sunday 2021. As we enter into the new season of our uh, long season of ordinary time, uh, I welcome you um, each and every Sunday of the summer. We are so glad to be able to worship together during this time. And so what a nice weather um, to come out and join us. Just a couple of announcements as some of our programming is going to go a little down, right? Just minimally um, allowing folks opportunity to rest and recreate this summer. I ask you to look forward to uh, the concerts this year, which actually will happen on Friday evenings in July in our courtyard. And I also ask you to join me uh, for a coffee hour after this service if you're still unable to join us here in person. I always enjoy my time with all of you there. And now I always like to leave us with an important reminder uh, that our, our rector always gives us, and that is that wherever you are on your spiritual journey, there's a place for you at Epiphany.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given to us your servants grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory, O Father who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to living, live according to the flesh, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord.
our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. There was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who has descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord. In the name of the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, Christians, seekers, and friends. Happy Trinity Sunday. I'm super excited to be here with you this morning. And I hope that you all are as excited as I am. You get to hear a sermon about the Trinity today. Hooray, right? And I really mean it. For those of you who have glanced over the letter in the bulletin, you'll see that I'm not actually making a joke. Zach, our director of music, has put his foot down about jokes on the Trinity this year. So I am being sincere here. I only hope you are too. Because if I have one thing in life I really struggle with, it is the killjoy, the Cassandra, the dog in the manger, the party poop. And I would say that most of us here probably feel the same way, right? Now, I don't want to be that all holier-than-thou-art type of person who is here scolding you about your as-of-yet unformed personal theory on the doctrine of the Trinity. I'm just asking that you don't meet my hooray here with a naysay. You know what I'm talking about, right? It's like when you're in a super good mood. You're in a Katrina and the Waves walking on sunshine kind of good mood. You're in the Gene Kelly singing in the rain or the feral happy kind of mood. And then you meet up with someone, maybe a friend or a loved one, 
And they are so grumpy or so, you can't even put your finger on it, that you suddenly feel all the joy draining out of you like an untied balloon. Or like when you come up with an idea that seems so new and fresh and fantastic and you want to tell everyone you see about it, and then you are met with 45 minutes filled with reasons why your idea won't work, cannot work, and is just generally a bad, terrible, no good idea. Now, I'm not claiming that I would even be in the running for Little Miss Sunshine. However, it is one of my genuine life goals to avoid raining on the parades of those around me, those I love and care about. And this is, I would argue, even if it sounds a little daft, exactly what spreading the good news actually looks like. Because even if we don't get all of the philosophical and theological and historic significance of the Trinity, I can tell you that living in communion within the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit is supposed to bring us peace, joy, real happiness, and of course, dance music. Now, I bet you didn't expect that last bit, did you? But I couldn't even make this up. It's true. If we want to flex some big theological Trinitarian words about community as the heart of God, we might use words like perichoresis in Greek or circumincesio in Latin. And guess how we translate perichoresis, friends? In the original Greek, peri means around. And Korea has to do with a type of round dance with its music. In the same way, the later Latin translation of this word, circumincesio, refers to the same thing. Circum means going around, and incendiary means to go and to step and to march along and move. So when we think of the relationship between the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and ourselves, we really are talking about a dance, complete with, of course, dance music. Now, if you're having a difficulty visualizing the Trinity as a dance, I would suggest not thinking of it in terms of a ballroom dance or dances like the Lindy Hop or the Jitterbug, because these dances are done in pairs. Two partners dance together, whereas the Trinity is made up of three persons. And as Jesus tells his disciples all too clearly in last week's gospel, the dyad is not sufficient for us to fully participate or live within God's dance of love. Jesus says, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Holy Spirit will not come to you. But if I go, I will send them to you. So when the Holy Spirit came to advocate for us and dwell within us, it allowed us to recognize within ourselves our connection to God and our rightful place out there on the dance floor. Without the coming of the Spirit, we would have remained on the sidelines, feeling like mere spectators separated from God. And from this place of alienation, we could have felt shy and self-conscious, like wall wallflowers at a middle school dance. With the coming of the Spirit, however, we are held within this circle of love that continuously emanates and flows from and between the Father and the Son. So if we want to understand the Trinity's dance, we have to think bigger than just a couple of people dancing together. But it doesn't actually stop there. We also have to think bigger than just three persons of the Trinity as well. The very essence and nature of the Holy Spirit is this circulating and ever-creating love of God 
And so we also have to imagine all of the children, all of the living creatures, all of God's creation dancing within their constant flow of love, going back and forth. We have to imagine something like a huge disco or a club filled with dancers and the music that swells our hearts and our minds and all of the dancers on the floor are somehow whirling and twirling together in one great dance. And this dance is necessarily circular. No linear country line dancing or the disco hustle. But very much like Turkish dancing, that I first experienced while living in Northern Cyprus. Now you may have seen this at a wedding or a party, but based on the traditional Turkish wedding dance, this circle dance is just so much fun. In this kind of dancing, one's whole group of friends and family, they all dance together in a big circle, with each person being invited into the center to do their favorite dance while everyone else along the side claps and cheers them on. In this kind of dance, everyone is included, and there's no need for partners to cajole their less-than-willing spouses or dance partners out to the dance floor. All those who wish to dance are included, involved and encircled by the dance. I think it's fitting that I first experienced this kind of dancing with Turkish Cypriots because much of our thinking about our triune God came from the Cappadocian Fathers. The early Christian bishops, Basil of Caesarea, his brother Gregory of Nicaea, and their friend Gregory of Nazianzus, who hailed from the Cappadocian region in modern-day Turkey. And this was an early site of Christian community through the evangelizing work of Paul. Now, the Cappadocians advanced the development of early Christian theology and gave voice to our doctrine of the Trinity, in which we recognize that from the very beginning, relationship has been at the center of God's being. And while it is difficult to put into words As Richard Rohr might say, whatever is going on in God is a flow, a radical relatedness, a perfect communion between three, a circle dance of love. And God is not just a dancer. God is the dance itself. Christians, as we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit, our life lived within God's dance is meant to be beautiful and invigorating and delightful. In today's gospel, Jesus tells Nicodemus what this new life will look like. He says that those who wish to enter in must be born from above. But it isn't supposed to be hard. It isn't supposed to be dualistic with us on one side trying very, very hard to follow the rules so that God, as judge, will tell us if we're good or bad. So we're left feeling like we're in some kind of celestial dance-off. This new community is about a new and intimate relationship with God, which is mystical and profound and inclusive, and celebrative. Now, I know it's hard to put the Trinity into terms that folks can understand. That is, after all, why there are so many different Trinitarian jokes. Because the Trinity is something that is super hard to put into words. It is something we live within, which we only come to recognize through our dance itself. But in an attempt to clarify it, hopefully a little bit, I thought we might think about it in terms of the adjectives we might use in our modern-day practice of Christianity. When we talk about born-again Christians, or what Jesus called born-from-above Christians, what is the first adjective 
that comes into our minds. Well, for me, that word is earnest, with earnest being defined as showing an intense and genuine conviction for one's belief in God, right? Born-again Christians want to tell. They want to evangelize. They can't keep it in, right? However, for those born from above, that is, those who are welcomed into the dance through their belief in the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I would say that enthusiastic is probably a better adjective. Now, I know that enthusiasm may not be the first thing that comes to mind when you think about the practice of Christianity. Enthusiastic? What? Look, I know what we all think of as enthusiasm today. I know it's super nerdy. Be honest, when I asked at the beginning if you were excited to hear a sermon on the Trinity, you were thinking, Ruth Ann's just being a nerd, right? She's just geeking out. And I can kind of resemble that remark most of the time. I'm the person who, even as an English major, struggles not to punctuate each and every sentence with an exclamation point, and who doesn't just like posts on Facebook, but loves all the things friends post there. But the original meaning of enthusiasm doesn't really have anything to do with my geekiness, right? It comes from Latin, enthusiasmus, which means inspiration, frenzy, which in turn comes from Greek, enthusiasmos, which means to be inspired or possessed by God. Remember, theos is God. And being inspired or possessed by God, well, if that doesn't ba just beg for dance music, I don't know what does. Christians in this world, our commission given to us by our Lord Jesus Christ is to encourage, to support, and to love one another enthusiastically. We are meant to bring good news to folks, right? We, we worry about that term evangelism, but all we're doing is shielding the joyous. We're encouraging the dreamers. We are joining the dance of life wholeheartedly. As my husband Jeremy can attest, for the last six months or so, I have been listening to a lot of dance music at home. Dance music has honestly all but eclipsed my NPR news in the morning as I get ready for work. And as I carry the tunes in my head, I often start playing them throughout the day with impromptu dances occurring all over the house, in the kitchen, in the living room, at the end of the day. Being alive is a miraculous thing. And if I could go back and tell my middle school self anything at all, I would tell her that on we or world weariness is so completely outdated. There are more than enough lead balloons, party poopers, and naysayers in this world. We need more exclamation points. We need more fun and play and delight. If we were to give our, our best voice and try to describe the essence of the Trinity, it just might be something super simple. Like, it makes me feel like dancing. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord.
who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of death and the life of the world to come. Amen. Holy, holy, holy God, you manifest your concern for your whole universe. You invite us as your people to gather the world's needs into our hearts and bring them before you. We pray for this holy gathering and for those who enter our circle of faith. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for all who minister in Christ and for all the holy people of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Glory and praise to you, O living God. We pray for the leaders of the nations and for all who seek peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Glory and praise to you, O living God. We pray for all who struggle to establish greater peace upon earth, especially those who serve in the military those on missions of hope and mercy, and their families. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for all those in need, the suffering and the oppressed, those who are sick and hospitalized, especially Amber, Carol, Anne, Todd, Ivan, Seth, Maggie, Libby, David, Cole, Lynn, Alice, Phil, Bill, Patty, Cheryl, Susan, Trish, Marge, Addie, and for those suffering from COVID-19. Let us pray to the Lord. Glory and praise to you, Lord God. We pray for all who rest in the hope of the resurrection, especially Shirley Lundstrom, and for all the departed. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for those on our hearts, offering praise and thanksgiving, intercession and solace, comfort and healing, for those we now name silently or aloud. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Holy, holy, holy God, fill us with strength and courage, with discernment and compassion, that we may be your instruments of justice and love in the world, that it may be on earth as it is in heaven. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry when we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. May the God of hope 
Fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. to the Lord our God. It is right to give all thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, for with your co-eternal Son and Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, in trinity of persons and in unity of being. And we celebrate the one and equal glory of you, O Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. 
Gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we've fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you, and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. 
Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Join me in lifting your bread and wine. And these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. May the spirit of truth lead you into all truth, giving you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and to proclaim the wonderful works of God and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always.